Welcome to fxstreet.com. Please don't forget to join us on YouTube by hitting subscribe, and you can follow me. I'm John, your analyst. You can follow me on Twitter at JustAnalysis1. Taking a look at Polkadot, or Dot. So we've had this uh, head and shoulders pattern that's existed for a while, ever since we kind of touched a little bit below the neckline around that 2633 level. A little bit of a bounce yesterday, and then going into today, we're flirting with some breaks above the cloud, which has so far acted as our near-term resistance. The relative strength index is fairly neutral, sitting um, at uh, the 46 to 50 level. I've shifted the RSI into bear market conditions because of the weakness it's had, struggle, struggling to get back above 40 or 50. Uh, the composite index has moved above its fast average, but the slope here is not very strong. And if it does move higher, if it does create a high above this peak, we'll have some hidden bearish divergence. The upside potential looks very limited to roughly that 30 to $30.75 range. That's where the Kijin Sen and the Tenkin Sen are at. And specifically the Kijin Sen, the red average up here, it's very flat and it's been a, it's been a, a been in that condition for quite a long time and long long periods of flat ranges on on the, the Kijin Sen or single span B within the Ichimoku system are a sign of strength so it's going to be very difficult to crack above that uh, when you look at the volume profile for 2021 you can see we're technically trading inside of a zone here that is very thin volume profile wise and technically it is easier now to move further south than it is to move up because the profile thickens up considerably we're a ways below the 2021 point of control which is at roughly 34 and a half 34 dollars and 50 cents and the optics bands are not at extremes, so things here look very much mostly like they could just sit sideways, but uh, definitely have some capped pressure. Uh, on the weekly chart, if we want to see a representation of how horrible trading conditions are, you can see the cloud. Now, the cloud within Ichimoku represents indecision, volatility. Um, it's the worst place to be, you know... Ichimoku tells us not to trade things that are or look at things that are inside the cloud um, because it just it's a horrible place to be. Um, everything bad that exists in a market is probably inside the cloud. But you can see how you know choppy it is and indecisive it is, and we haven't had any clear movement anywhere. The fact that the lagging span, the black average over here, is below the candlesticks, that 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 should signal some very um uh, strong, weak signals here. Um, that doesn't make sense. Strong, weak signals, but it, it should signal some, you know, downside uh, uh, bias. And the near-term support here, uh, it's a good chunk of it because the Tenkin Sen on the weekly is at twenty-seven eighteen, and then you have the three eight two down here at twenty-five oh one. So going back to the daily chart, if we look at it, you know, there's. It's it's a choppy choppy zone. I mean, this is not a this is not a fun instrument to look at. I'd say downside pressure is, is uh, limited towards the bottom of the cloud at single span B and the fifty percent retracement here. There's two fifty percent retracements from the swing from uh, July twentieth up to May fifteenth, and then from July eighteenth up to September fourteenth. Uh, those two fifty percent fibs reside. Uh, just above and below the single span B. So 22.35 is likely the cap on the downside pressure, uh, you know, if it does travel further south while the upside potential is capped around that $30.50 range. Thank you for watching. I look forward to speaking with you in a future video.